Hey, and welcome to Speedrunning Poppy Playtime Chapter 1, a short and sweet intro to the series that can be made even shorter, as with a few tricks, it has been finished in less than only 5 minutes. Although the developers have done some questionable things in terms of lore and the tokens of the non-fungible variety to access it, I still had fun checking this game out when it first popped off, and with Chapter 2 of the series coming out like any day now, figured I'd revisit this goof. So, go tickle that like button, or else Buddy here will haunt you for all eternity. Let's head on back to the Playtime Co. Factory and check out how a baby's head can be used to speedrun this chapter extremely quickly. Alright, so first, as usual, let's go over the more beginner route for this chapter. It may not be the sub-5 minute speedrun path, which we'll come back to later, but this is the general and much more consistent strategy for still a respectable time. So the speedrun timer starts as soon as we load into the Playtime Company lobby here, right after watching the very lengthy intro cutscene. Watching this every time you restart a run gets pretty tiring. I believe the ability to skip it was added in an update, but I'm running the original pre-patch version here for reasons we'll get into later this video. Anyways, right off the bat, we can hit up this door and punch in the password to open it up. And, thankfully, the color combination here is always the same, so we just gotta punch in red, yellow, pink, green. Bada bing, bada boom, now we rush over to grab this VHS tape, which we can then slam into the VCR machine here to start the hand cannon instructional video. Now, this is gonna make me feel super old, but I'd be willing to bet that a large chunk of you watching this video have probably never played a VHS tape in your life. Anyways, there's not really anything we can do to speed this video up here, and we need it to finish to unlock the left blue hand here. So basically, you just wait until Billy here gets his head yoinked off, and yeah, there we go, we got the first hand. Also, a small trick you can do here to save some time is pause as soon as the glass starts moving here, and then load the last autosave, which will instantly load you in with the blue hand. Now normally, you have to wait for this glass to slowly open up completely before you can grab the pack. And since pause and load times aren't counted in this category to account for different PC hardware, this can certainly save a few seconds. Anyways, with the handgun now in our possession, we can finally progress from the lobby as we can unlock this blue hand door leading us to this atrium area, with Huggy Wuggy waiting for us in the middle. There's no way this guy can be dangerous, right? <laughs> Anyways, after giving Huggy Wuggy a mandatory high five, we try to open the next door, which causes the power to go out. Thankfully, and conveniently, this key magically appears in Huggy's hand, so we can snag it and head on into the electrical room. Here, you just have to grab and rip off the electrical panel, and then use the extendo hand to conduct electricity to the two rods in the room to turn the power back on. You can also save a bit of time here, as, at least in the original pre-patch version of this game, sometimes the hand will actually go through the panel to skip having to pull it off. But on the flip side, when doing this, often the extended part of the hand won't collide with the rods, which can actually end up costing time. So it's kind of a risk-reward choice that needs to be made if you manage to get the hand through. Anyways, with the power back on, hey, wasn't there something large, fuzzy, and blue in the middle here? Oh well, must be nothing, so let's finally open up this next door here. Oh look, a large fuzzy blue arm, let's give it a high five. Then after quickly running down this hallway, we get to probably the worst section of the speedrun, at least in this beginner route. And I say worst because how well the section goes is entirely left to chance, as the red, yellow, and green energy cubes, or whatever they are that you need to find here, appear in one of a few randomly chosen locations. Now, after a while, you can definitely remember all the spawn locations to save some time, but even then, some cube spawns will be further away, causing more time loss. Now, ideally, you get as many cubes spawn close to where you drop, and just like with the trick earlier, time isn't counted when the game is paused or during load screens, so if you want, you can constantly keep reloading the area to try and get more optimal cube spawns. But in any case, after grabbing all four cubes, you can pull open this door, backtrack up to the top area again, plop the cubes into the panel, and after some more waiting, the red right hand will fall down for us to grab and finally bring balance to our screen. Then next, we can open this door and slide on down to this area where we once again have to do some electrical wiring. There's a small trick you can do here by quickly grabbing both power nodes and just falling back, which causes the game to freak out and zip you right to the door you're opening. It's not a huge time save, but it's a nice to have. Then, after crawling through this toy parts chute, we get taken to the toy assembly room. Here we can run upstairs, cheese yet another wiring puzzle by simply just doing a leap of faith across this gap here to quickly get the power on, 
And yeah, don't mess this jump up because it will cost a lot of time since the game slows down and doesn't really let you move if you take too much fall damage. So, that being said, after getting the power on, aim for one of the things below you to avoid that fall damage, and then right after, hit the big red button to start up the assembly machine. Now, just like the instructional video earlier, after pulling the levers and seeing the doll being made for the first time, every subsequent run of this chapter, it's basically just over a minute of waiting here. But, while waiting here, you can actually work on another little speedrun trick. Basically, you gotta set up some boxes here to use later, but we'll come back to that in a bit. First, we gotta grab the Robo Dog B or whatever doll it is. Now, you can be a slow chump and just grab it after it's all the way out here by the door, but turns out that the collision with this here angled section isn't quite... well, there. So if you stand at the right spot and aim your arm shot just right, you can actually grab the doll sooner than you normally can to save a few precious seconds. Anyways, now with the toy, we can get back to these boxes from before. So basically, as far as I understand it, having something placed in this location messes with how the game loads in Huggy Wuggy here. And as such, he will be apparently loaded in a different area, and long story short, if done correctly, the game kinda kicks you backwards. Now apparently how far you get kicked can vary, but honestly, you might only save a few seconds at most with this, so it's yet another one of those nice-to-have tricks rather than something necessary. So if you don't get it in a run, it's not that big of a deal, really. Anyways, now on to the final stretch here. We hop on into the vent chase sequence, and basically, if you know the right path through this, this part is pretty easy. Then, after making Huggy Wuggy spit out some jam, we make our way to the poppy room, open the door, open the door, open the door, and that's time. Now, after only about a day of practicing this path, I was able to get a time of around 8 minutes with the cubes being the only real struggle. Honestly, this beginner route was one of the easiest speedruns to learn, but don't you worry, the heat is gonna get cranked up right away. Now, 8 minutes isn't all too shabby, but it's certainly not less than 5 minutes. So with the beginner stuff out of the way, now let's see how the top runners blaze through this factory. So first, to pull off this advanced trick, you need to be playing the original pre-patch release of the game, as an update was pushed out that actually patched this exploit. Essentially, there's a trick near the start of the chapter where you can clip into a wall and actually skip having to do a lot of things. The problem is, this trick is incredibly hard to pull off, and as such, it's extremely inconsistent. To kind of paint a picture of how inconsistent it is, only like a handful of the currently submitted runs actually have this trick pulled off in a run. Anyways, that's a lot of build-up for this trick, so you're probably wondering, what exactly is it? Well, if you've played Poppy Playtime, you've probably experienced just how janky the game's physics can be, and this exploit... exploits that. Basically, if you run over certain objects while they are moving, the game will freak out and cause the player to zip around. And if done close enough to a wall, you guessed it, the erratic movement can actually clip you right through it. So, when the run starts, you jog on over behind the reception desk towards these objects on the floor, a toy part, a doll arm, as well as a baby doll head. Yeah, as creepy as it is, this head is actually the best for this glitch. It seems like you can pull off this trick with any of these three objects, but I guess since the head is the biggest and easiest to push around, it tends to work a bit better. Anyways, if you're able to pull off the trick, big emphasis on if, since this took me well over an hour to even get once, you can get behind the wall here. Now the fun really starts, as we have to start navigating the stage out of bounds by jumping between loaded areas and avoid falling into the infinite void below. Eventually, you get to this vent segment, and here things get a bit complicated in terms of how this trick is pulled off. But the way I understand it, in baby terms, is essentially you jump onto this vent, and then you want to keep moving along it and into it until you get stuck. Once you get stuck, you then want to jump, and if jumping makes you move up along the vent, you gotta move back and try again. But if you try jumping, and you just go straight up and down, then you're in a good spot, and this jump kinda like pushes you a bit more into the vent. From here, you have to aim towards this box, and then take a leap of faith into the abyss, and then pause the game and load it back in. If all went well, this should actually trigger an autosave segment later in the chapter. So, this next time loading back in, you'll actually load in AFTER getting the blue hand. 
So, although the trick is extremely difficult to pull off consistently, if you do, you can skip the intro tutorial video, going to the atrium, turning on the power, all of it. And of course, this saves a big chunk of time. I should also point out that this trick also requires you to change the frame rate the game runs at to make certain things possible. Now, I don't know the exact technical reasons for this, but for example, the game has to be running at 120 frames per second when jumping onto the vent thing. And nope, that's not the last of the exploits here either. Next, in the room with the power cubes, another trick can be pulled off by grabbing and holding this cart here, and then basically using it as an extra platform to make a long jump towards this conveyor belt. Then, after jumping a few conveyor belts over, you can do another death-defying leap in the void across here, and then, after clipping into this vent, you can once again close the game and reload it as we hit yet another autosave trigger. And this time, this autosave takes us right to the toy production line area with the red hand obtained, thus again skipping a decently large chunk of the game. Like, take in, the in-game time that it takes to get here with these exploits is about as long as it took us to just sit through the intro VHS and get the blue hand. Yeah, that's how much time can be saved. Anyways, the rest of the run, outside of a little stair skip as seen here, is basically the same. And after another trip to the poppy room, a sub 5 minute run can be achieved. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! As of the making of this video, only a handful of runners have gotten sub 5 minutes. And this doesn't surprise me at all considering how difficult some of these tricks are to pull off individually. I couldn't imagine stringing them all together in one run perfectly. But hey, if you're willing to deal with a few really tricky exploits, you too can join the Sub-5 crew. And that's speedrunning Poppy Playtime Chapter 1, and I hope you enjoy. If you did, check out my other speedrun videos, and subscribe to find your way back in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today, and I will see you in a bit.